Oh boy. My my wife my wife said something to me about having poor time management skills. I don't know. I don't even I don't know what that means. Anyways, <laughs> cheers, happy homebrew Wednesday. I, I I'm trying out this this microphone here to see if I can get a little better sound on these videos. Um I wouldn't exactly say I'm double fisted, but uh, anyway, there you go. So, um, just because they're 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 cutting the grass outside and there's lots of noise around here, so let's see what happens. Anyway, cheers. Uh, welcome back. I'm drinking uh, a Cooper's um, Mexican cerveza or cerveza out of this Corona glass here. Um, it's quite nice, actually. A um, little small um, of a vessel to be drinking out of. Not only do you have to refill it a lot, you know, you really should be drinking out of larger glasses like like this one because then if if you're, you know, when your wife asked you how many beers you had last night, you can be completely honest and just say, "Honey, I only had 5." Okay? And you don't have to lie. That's how that works. Got that figured out too. Anyway, yes. So, um I have a, a an IPA brewing over here. It's just at uh, Cooper's IPA. Put some extra hops in there. Um, boiled up some hops. Threw them in there. Smells beautiful coming out of the airlock, as you heard. <laughs> and um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, mini mash. And uh, I think this is something that a lot of brewers haven't tried yet. They've done the the hop teas and they've done the steeping you know specialty grains and whatnot and you know i think there's i get the sense just from some of the messages i get that there might be a little confusion out there as a you know in regard to the uh, you know a, a mash versus a steep and for people who are just getting started brewing that might be uh i, I i'm sorry I, I feel like i should be telling jokes here <laughs> with this thing i don't know Anyway, is it karaoke time? Um, so, um, basically what you've got is two main types of grain. Uh, and I'm, I say main because there's others, but it basically boils down to two. One is, has uh, been malted, well, they've... Let's let's not go there. Hang on. One one is is able to be soaked in hot water and have produce sugars, which as you if you are up to speed, you know that you need sugars to, to create alcohol when you're making your your beer. Um, so that's your 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 malted barley, your two row, your base malt. You soak that and you in water, warm water, hot water and you get a conversion there and it's it's a little it's not really complicated but it's a little long-winded i'm going to put a link down in the more info section or the info section whatever it's called nowadays um to an excellent excellent video that you should watch at some point it's half an hour long but it's from um bobby from new jersey and boy did he ever explain this stuff and there's details in there but he's so good at explaining things that you'll get it Okay, but don't watch it yet. When I'm done, you can go and check it out. Um, basically, what he what he says is is that um, you know there's a difference between mashing and steeping. All right, steeping you're just getting um, flavors and color out of it, just like tea. You know, making it, it's actually exactly like making tea. You take some specialty grains. That's what they're called. Specialty grains tend to be the ones that have been roasted um, or that they've had things done to them to, to darken them or add flavor to them. Maybe they've been smoked, roasted, um, treated in some, in some way. Here we've got some, what are these actually? I don't even know. They smell like, yeah, crystal. They're crystal 60. Beautiful, beautiful smell. There's a whole story behind these, why they're called crystal. And I think that's, Another thing that's included in, in Bobby's video, um, when you decide to watch that, it's very informative. Okay, so those are specialty grains. You would put them in a, a, a bag, you know, a, a um, you know, a, a bag of sorts. Okay, try to keep them as loose as you can, 
and you would just soak them in 160 degree Fahrenheit water for half an hour and move them around a little bit, get, you know, just like making tea really. And you're going to get that color. You're going to get that flavor. But one thing you're not going to get out of that is sweetness. If you taste that wort or water or flavored water after you steep these specialty grains, it's going to be very bitter. It's not going to be, well, I wouldn't say bitter, but it's just, it's not going to be sweet at all. And, and so there's no sugars in there. Uh, you just got some flavor. Now, when, you, when it comes down to the base malts, one of which is two row, um, then there you've got extra stuff going on. You have to be a little more accurate and a little more careful with when you soak these things in, in hot water to make sure that the, the, the ratio between water and grain is, is right. Um, you just don't want them floating around willy nilly in, in water like, like pasta because then it, they, they won't, the, the enzymes will not be able to be concentrated enough to, to convert. And again, that's an explanation that I, I don't want to get into. Basically, they take the barley and they, they moisten it and they put it at a certain temperature where it will start to germinate. It'll start to um, sprout. And this is called malting. Okay, and then once that happens, they stop. They stop the process. They dry it out very quickly, and then when so that when when that happens, there's an enzyme that's created that's supposed to be uh, active in getting it started and growing into a plant. Okay, that's the whole. It's, this is all nature. It's all. It's amazing stuff. And um, so, what's going to happen when you soak these these base malts, as opposed to the specialty grains, where you're just going to end up with flavor and color, you're going to end up with sugars. The starches are going to convert through a process due to the enzymes that are in this little seed here. These are seeds, you know, that's what these are. Okay. And those starches are going to convert into sugar. Okay. And so what you're going to get is not only you're going to get color and flavor, but you're also going to get the sugars needed to produce the alcohol. And, you know, you're sort of embarking on all grain brewing here. So with all that in mind, here's, here's what, what I suggest to those of you who are still doing the beer kits or doing extract, just plain extract brewing, uh, you can save some money. Um, if you go out and get yourself and you can buy it in bulk. And I do recommend you get yourself a a uh, a grain mill you've seen you've seen mine it's just a little crank thing with the hopper on top just a, it just clamp, clamps onto my my workbench here it was 70 bucks or something and you know you can buy one of those those big ass ones you know you can put 12 pounds of grain in there and that's fine but they're, they're a little expensive for somebody like myself who normally does partial extract brewing i don't need a big one like that i just do crank it up in this little corona one Corona, Corona, one I've got here, um, which is worth its weight in gold, if you ask me. If you're a brewer, you can always, you can buy your, your grains in bulk. Like I bought a 50 pound bag of two row for 50 bucks, and I can go in there anytime I want and scoop two or three pounds into this, into this little Corona thing here, grind it up, and I got, you know, a good amount of fermentables there that uh, I can use instead of buying malt because you get a couple of couple of cans of this you know right or you get your uh you know your your unhopped bulk liquid malt extract but you're you're generally buying you know two or three cans of it or, or you're buying you're supplementing it with dry malt extract they don't have any of that right now and it, that stuff gets expensive sometimes and if you're like me and you're brewing to save money which is exactly why i make beer mostly, um, flavor comes into play a little bit, but mostly it's to save money, then why not save as much money as you can? It takes a little longer. And I've got a couple of videos on YouTube doing mini mashes on the stove in my kitchen. So basically what you're going to do is, for example, just for example, you can take, you know, a can like this. This has already been hopped. So you don't have to worry about 
any of that stuff. Okay, it's already got hops in it. This one not so much, but the other ones, the IPAs and whatnot, they they have more. And so you get yourself, and I don't know the exact amounts. So I have to go into Beer Smith and, and figure it out, but we'll talk about it on my Friday night broadcast a little bit more. You get some uh, some some two row, say four pounds, three or four. Crack it up in your little grain mill there, and you put it in a pot full of water that's about, say, at about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And you stir it, and you, you make sure your ratios are right. It should look like porridge. You don't want it to look like soup, and you don't want it to be slodgy and m like mud. You want it to be like, sort of like a porridge, where it's sort of thick, but, you know, not so thick that you're, you have, you know, spooning it, you know. And there's lots of videos on YouTube um, showing you how to do your mashes and how to how, the consistency of it. But once you get that down, I mean, all you got to do is grab yourself a, a pot. I've got a few around here. You know, a big pot like this, you know. Doesn't have to be a huge turkey fryer or anything like that. A couple gallons of water, some, some two-row. Soak it up. One hour at 150 degrees, 152 maybe Fahrenheit. Uh, keep it at that temperature the best to, best you can. Uh, I would recommend a, uh, get yourself an accurate thermometer, such as this one here, okay, or one like it. And that's called a mash. That's a mini mash. Okay, you don't need special equipment. You don't need a cooler or any kind of you know strange equipment. You just need a pot, some two row some water and a thermometer, you get that up to temperature. And I do have videos on YouTube showing you how to do it. I'll link to at least one of them down below. So you can watch that and see how I did mini mash on the stove. It was successful it was, and it created some great flavors in the beer. And it's cheaper than buying malt extract. Okay, so you get to buy a little less malt extract than you normally would because you're making your own. And grains are a dollar a pound for where I live. Um, I don't know if that's common where you guys come from, if it's cheaper maybe, I don't know, but uh, so if you're using like three pounds, let's say, three and a half pounds of, of two row, um, that's three bucks, three and a half, you know, three dollars and fifty cents, as opposed to, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine dollars for dry malt extract, it takes a little more time, that's always the issue though, with, with making beer, is it's a trade-off. You know, you can do quickie ones from the Coopers or the Muntons or whatever brand you, you use. Or you can start spending more time and doing one hour boils, adding your own hops, and all that stuff. It's, you know, and I, I, I don't want to go too long on this video. So I have videos how to make hop tea and add that to your, you can take a beer kit just like that and make it the way you normally make it. But instead of, of uh, just throwing it in and putting the water in and adding, you know, whatever, you can actually add hops to it as well. And I've got a video called Hop To It that also will show you how to do that. And you can get a much more of a hop flavor in your beer by doing it that way. And it only takes an extra 10 minutes. Um, so there's, there's lots of simple ways of, of brewing. And I think that the mini mash idea is a great introduction to all grain brewing because it allows you to do it on a small scale. Um, on your stove with no special equipment, right? And if you taste, when you're done your mash, you've done it properly, you taste it, and it's sweet, you've got per conversion, you've got your sugars. And you just pour it through a sieve, you know, through a strainer, and maybe rinse it a couple times, you know, just to get it all out of there. Um, and use that as your strike water when you make your kit your beer kit, or whatever beer you're making. Um, it's so much fun to experiment, but I'm always a proponent of people doing things incrementally. Some guys just jump right in and do all grain the very first time, and that's fine. I I don't think I have the, the I'd have a heart attack, I think, if I had to do all grain for the first very first time I ever brewed beer. If I had to do it like that, I, I would have died, I think. But some guys are more brave than I am, so, uh, more power, you know, more power to them. But for most people, I think it's a good idea for you to just 
stick, stick your toe in, you know, okay, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of hop tea here, and get some Crystal 60. Put them in a bag, steep them for half an hour in 160 degree water, add that to your beer kit. You'll start seeing the differences in flavor. Mm, I can smell that. It smells like cereal, it's beautiful stuff. Um, don't forget, you have, to, you have to mill it though. You can't just throw it in whole, because it won't work. Um, that's why you need one of these little grinders here. Um, you'll start to see the differences. And you, you may get to a point where, because I think a lot of people, they may jump straight from the beer kits, straight over to all grain. And they're going like, oh man, this is, oh, this is way better. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh yeah. But they don't have any idea what's in, be what's in between. That you can actually get excellent results uh, from, from doing a sort of a, a hybrid version of, say, a, a kit or some fresh liquid malt extract and some of your own hops. And then adding some grains to that, whether it be a, a, a mini mash or just a, a simple steep of some, I keep, I can't get over the smell, of some specialty grains. And there's lots of them out there to choose from. I would start with Crystal. Crystal 60 is a good middle ground. You know, add that to a beer kit that you're really familiar with and you'll taste the difference. And so you can you can figure out where it is you want to be in in brewing. Do you want to do all grain all the time? Every single time you make beer, is that what you want to go through and do? All right. It, or is a beer kit good enough for you? Fine. Maybe somewhere in between. It's like, well, I like beer kits, but I love all grain, but I don't have the time for that. So maybe somewhere in between, you know, we do some extract, we do some, some uh, grains in there, boom, maybe add some fresh hops. You might find a, a middle ground that's comfortable time-wise and that you enjoy the flavor. Okay, that was sort of my rant for today, my discussion on that, because, uh, you know, everyone's got different amounts of time and everyone's got, you know, different amounts of equipment and money and whatnot. And there's plenty of options out there. If you have any questions about this, please post them down below. And I will answer them next week on my Homebrew Wednesday video. Uh, in the meantime, or call me on Friday night at justin.tv slash craigtube. Uh, my Skype name is craigtalk1. You can call me there and uh, on live on, on air and I'll answer your call and we'll talk about it during the cast. That, that would be lovely because then everyone can hear it, you know, not just me giving you an answer, but lots of people can get the information. That's a good thing. Finally, one last thing before I, before I go, as I lubricate. Mm. Is, I want to give a shout out to um, Jaded Brewing. I'm going to put a, a, a link down below here and in the, the more info section there. Um, it's a website that you should probably check out. Excellent stuff, mostly set, uh, centered on wort chillers and brew pots. They've got some great brew pots there and wort, wort chiller uh, combinations. I actually received this the other day. It was delivered to me and this, this is, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> now that's a pretty darn good little wort chiller there. It's a uh, um, quarter inch pipes but there's two of them as you can see and so what it does is it distributes the the surface area um, into more of the wart you know you've got you can use the the, the, the ones that are just you know the, the cylinder cylindrical ones the cylinder ones um, but uh, they're only covering that little ring of of wart you know whereas if you get one of these this is covering a lot of surface area inside your pot. And if, and if you just move it up and down while it's chilling like that, you're going to get your, your wart chilled down a lot faster. And I would use this for all grain, of course, and for um, partial extract beers as well, because you're generally boiling two or three gallons of water, and you're not going to be able to cool that down by adding topping up with cold water. Uh, you're going to need a wart chiller. And some people put it in the sink and surround it with cold water and whatnot, and that works too. But this gets it down a lot quicker. And I am going to be uh, sharing more information about wart chilling 
in a, in a future video. And I'll be talking more about this chiller and, and other types of chillers in another video in the future. So stay tuned for that. Um, but please do visit their website. They've got um, uh, those immersion chillers. They've got the uh, counterflow ones and there's lots of they've, their website is very organized and, and well well you know laid out so please do me a favor and, and check them out as well at least go take a look and the link is down below so i think that's it for me i'm winded long winded here um thanks for watching hope to see you on friday and um i guess i I don't I still can't think of any jokes to tell but uh I'll <laughs> I'll work on that. Thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching and uh be safe, okay? Cheers out. <laughs>